Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Parrot Bros. Now today we are doing a compression test. Now, the only reason I'm doing this is because the coolant bottle looks like it's spat out a load of coolant. There's a big orangey stain down the back of the bulkhead and it just seems like a good idea before I spend any money on it just to do the basics and we'll give it a compression test. Now, hopefully all four cylinders are the same. They might be down a little bit because it's done 170 something thousand miles. So the bores might be a little oval or a little bit tarnished, but We'll hope for the best eight fingers crossed i haven't done anything yet as you can see the car is still together so we're going to do it all on the film so any reactions we get during the process you will know about <laughs> so before we get stuck into it let's jump into the intro right so for a compression test you don't actually need that many tools you need a compression tester of course um, and all we need to do is remove if your car is standard the cover the n249 set up on top which is quite straightforward i'll walk you through it as we do it um, and then we need to remove the coil packs and the spark plugs so as long as you've got a reasonable socket set that will do that that is kind of all we need then the only other thing we'll have to do is we'll have to unplug the injectors as well as we don't want it flooding when we keep trying to turn it over make sure your battery is reasonably charged because obviously you're going to be trying to start it a few times um, if you haven't stick a jump pack on it or charge your battery up before starting this process so Let's get into it. Okay, so removal process. Um, you're gonna take your cover off and then you'll have an N249 system here. Now, what you wanna do, first get it unplugged. Now, this is a slightly different to the VAG normal plugs. It's got two sort of spring clips. Helps if you don't have big thick gloves on. And all you wanna do is, like anything, push it in, squeeze both sides, you can get onto it, and it pulls away. And then that will allow you to, this has got like a rubber band here, which is just around this metal bracket here. Um, and then that'll allow you just to get it out of the way enough for us to be able to do some work. Then you'll have a 10 mil, which will hold this vacuum reservoir onto the bracket. Once you've done that, you can then remove that. Now this is really tight because it's massive. Um, so you may need to remove the pipe out of it, which is the easier option usually. And whatever you do, don't do what I just did and break the pipe. So this is now added to our list of things to fix. Um, so that was out of there. <laughs> so yeah, that's another job onto the list, thank you. As with all TT work, one thing off the list, two things on. So that's one of the two. Right, so to remove this bracket, it is held on with Allen key bolts. Um, there's one at the side, two in the middle, two at the side. Now these two are already missing, so someone saved me half a job. Um, so I've just got to do the two in the middle, the one in the side, and I'll come back to you once I've done that. Now brackets removed, so you can just lift that away. Um, I'll show you now so you can see what I meant about fixing. So you've got one, two, two. Put this somewhere safe if you're gonna keep it. If not, weight reduction, couple of hundred grams. Uh, <laughs> um, now we're gonna go ahead and unplug the coils. Now, I don't know if you can see very well because unfortunately I can't get the camera any closer. This one here, oh, do you know what? I probably can. Let's give you an inside access. Oh yeah, look at that, close up. Right, so, oh, maybe not, the camera's about to fall over. Um, so yeah, this one here is held on by cable ties, so we'll need to clip them, and then the rest are clipped on normally. Um, I will be replacing that because that is really annoying. <laughs> Again, like anything with these plugs, what you wanna do, pull them towards you, push the tab, and then push them away and they'll just pull away. They're not particularly easy. And then the core pack wise, just a good straight pull and they should come out. You can just spin them to get them out. Covered in oil, which means, you know what that means? You've got a leaky inner ring. Look at that dripping off. Ooh, I'm gonna go and get something to collect that dirt with. Um, but yeah, that means my the ring's inside. Look at that, look. That won't be good for the connection on there. Plus the spark plug well will be full of oil. So we'll try and clean that before we start. Um, but yeah, just repeat that process four times. It's a little bit more tricky here. It helps if you just spin that off, take your, let's put that back on again. So that will fit the cap is tight. <laughs> take that off, take that off, stick that back on. So you see not drop anything down hole. That'll give you a little bit more space. 
Always wear your gloves. The moment you take them off, you will be filthy. Um, and then we'll carry on doing them. So I'll come back to you once we've got all of those removed and then we'll be ready to start the compression process. Right, so excuse the shaky footage, but I have to show you this because you won't believe it. So that's where the spark plug goes. How oh, can we get down there? Now, that's actually just oil. Uh, why is it not come up? Focus on the hole. It is just floating in oil. They can't even see the spark plug. That's what it should look like. Nice floaty oil. Well, this one just literally full of oil. So I'm going to have to suck that out first before I take the spark plugs out. Otherwise, we're going to have no end of problems because I'm going to have half a cylinder full of oil. So we'll get that done first and then we'll unplug the injectors and get cracking. Okay, so I thought I'd show you me removing some of the gunk out of this thing. Okay, so if you don't have one of these, this pump, this little battery operated pump here, just clicks onto your battery and it'll allow you to remove any kind of liquid from anything, great for gearbox services and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's a tenner on eBay. So I'll, um, I'll try and find a link for the one I've got. It's a bit of light, eh? Um, so I'm just gonna do the rest of all the other cylinders and then we shall crack on. Okay, so next up, we gotta remove our injectors. Like I said, we don't wanna flood um, the cylinders, now these have usually a bracket on which keep two in the same space. You wanna do two at the same time. And they push, they got like a metal thing. If you've got chubby fingers like me, you might struggle a little bit. See that metal clip there? You just wanna push that in and that allows you to remove it, pair at a time. And then that lifts off. Just make sure they're clear. Um, so just put them maybe down the side of the injectors like that. Now we can do our compression test. So we'll get our compression tester. Make sure it's clean. I've had a look down the boreholes and, well, yeah, they're lovely. Of course, spark plugs were nice and oily, as expected. Right, so you don't wanna to go too mad with this. You just wanna get a nice seal. It's got an O-ring. Yeah. We'll try that. We'll see what it gives us. Okay, so that was all four cylinders um, compression tested and the range is basically varied from late 140s to just over 150. All exactly the same. Now what I'll do is I'll take this one out, just give you a bit of a close up on this, let me just turn off the image tracking. Um, so all very similar results, which is kind of good. They're a little bit lower than I expected, but it is 170 something thousand miles. So that's kind of to be expected. Now, wait for this to focus in. There we go. So that's, that is the result you're looking for. Um, well, this is the result we've got. Um, between 140 and 150 is dropping a little bit because the pressure isn't 100% on these. Um, but basically, as long as you've got all four cylinders similar and sort of between, we'll say, what did we say, Lou? 150 to 180, it said. 140 something to 170 something. Um, so basically, as long as you've got a reasonable amount, it's all right. I mean, if one was down to say 50 to 80, then yeah, we'd have a, definitely have a problem. Um, but they're all a much of a muchness. So if all four are okay, we're all right. It is a tired engine. It's done 170 something thousand miles. So it's, it's to be expected, but I'm certainly not worried. If we were gonna do a big turbo, we definitely have to probably look at rings and have a look at the state of the bore and see what the crack is with that. And the valves might be a little bit carboned up, but generally that's not too bad. I'm really happy with that. It doesn't mean we have to throw the engine away so we can go ahead and do a service and get rid of that absolutely minging leaking rocker gasket. That's gonna be one of the first jobs uh, before we do a service because, well, 
it shouldn't have that that much oil in there to start with. Um, so I'll stick all the spark plugs back in again. It had Iridium plugs, which is really nice to see. Um, admittedly, they're a bit oily, <laughs> as you can imagine, but at least you know it's been looked after because it's got decent spark plugs in. They're a little bit carbony, but it hasn't really been driven a lot. It's just been started and sat and idled just to keep the battery good. So um, we're going to change the spark plugs anyway when we do a service, um, but we'll stick that back in for now. Now I'm going to need to, I actually broke this end plug here, so I need to replace two of the plugs. So when I have the charge pipe off and the rocker gasket off, we'll probably repin some of them plugs as well. I'll show you how to do that. It's quite a easy little job, especially if you can get either a repair plug kit or um, a new plug set or an old loom. Um, my spark plug socket keeps leaving the rubber cap in there, so you've got to just nick that back. Um, but yeah, no, that's all all right. I mean, the I didn't show you when I pulled these out, but... These are properly minging inside. Um, I've given them a clean as best I can with some brake cleaner. These are actually all, what's the date on these? Seven, hmm. They're 17.10, so they're either the 17th week of 2010 or the 10th week of 2017, I'm not really sure which. Um, but they've all been replaced, they're all the same, which is always nice because usually if a plug fails, they tend to all follow suit shortly after, and people will often replace one, then replace one, and you usually find they're all different heights, some are bolt down, some are push into there. All the same, all the same brand, all the same year, um, which is nice because then you know at least it means they've done it. So if one fails, you replace all because the, all the rest of them are likely to fail. Um, we definitely need to give this a bit of a clean up. I might even paint the rocker cover while it's off. Why not, eh? Um, maybe paint the charge pipe as well. But to be honest, I don't really care. Um, I just want to get this up and running, getting it, enjoying it, using it, and then we can start looking at a big turbo or a turbo swap out at some point. Um, but yeah, I hope you found that interesting, the compression test yet. Like I said, um, I'll pop some links up to something that's usable. Um, really easy to do. I mean, if you know a mechanic or you've got a friend who's a mechanic, they've probably got one of these anyway. Uh, but all you do is just take a spark plug out at a time, put it in, wind it down tight. It's got an O-ring. It doesn't need to go mad tight. Um, it just seals enough. You'll know whether it seals or not, whether you get any readings then give it five or ten turns over like i said make sure your injectors are unplugged make sure all your core plaques are unplugged you don't want to flood the car or cause any problems more than you're trying to achieve um, but it's a relatively straightforward process um, so yeah we're good to carry on with the build until the next hurdle i mean uh, until the next video <laughs> bye for now